Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, let's take a look at a few of the upgrades that I've done to the RV to support ham radio operations. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So I've made several upgrades to the RV to support ham radio. Let's take a look at a few of those. Let me get you guys flipped around here and we'll start with the generator. So this here is the Champion Dual Fuel 2500 watt generator, and it will run on both gasoline and propane. We don't, however, use it uh, with gasoline because, well, I um, would either have to store gasoline in an enclosed vehicle or in an enclosed RV. Since we don't tow with a pickup truck I, uh, and have a way to keep that gas outside, I really didn't like that option. So what we do is we utilize this with propane. And what we have is two 20 pound propane tanks on the front of the RV. And typically I'll save one of these for use with the generator and one for use for everything else inside the RV, such as the cooktop stove and the hot water heater. Now we really only need the generator if we're going to uh, run the air conditioning unit or uh, if we want to run the microwave. Everything else can be powered off of the battery. And running the AC unit in 90 degree temps, uh, 90 to 95 degree temps here in Tennessee, uh, where it gets down to 75, 80 degrees overnight, I can get about 12 to 13 hours and still have about 20% left in one of those propane tanks. Up front, right behind the propane tanks, you will see a battery box, and this houses the 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery, as well as a Bluetooth shunt that gives me quite a bit more information about the battery. Now, coming around to the side of the RV, I've got this thing on the side that is called solar on the side, and I was a little disappointed when I first got this because I thought this would feed into the solar charge controller, uh, and it doesn't. You actually have to use your own solar charge controller if you want to feed into this port. However, here's what I discovered. It's a standard SAE connector. So what I did was I made up a little adapter cable that comes out and gives me power poles. Now, the cool thing about this is I can then attach a uh, extension cable to this and simply have this for playing radio when I want to sit outside under the awning. Let's go ahead and uh, head around to the back and take a look at the antennas and then we'll crawl up on the roof for a quick second. As you can see on the back, I typically will run two antenna masts, and those are held in place with uh, a ladder mount on one of them. And you can kind of get a look at the way that works right there. It's mounted to the ladder, and then the mast just simply sits down uh, into that little cup holder type device. And then up above there, you'll see that we have the rest of the ladder mount. So this holds that mass really securely. Now the other side, I just simply have sitting on the ground and then I'm using that little orange uh, tie to hold it to the ladder. One side holds the uh, HF antenna, the other side holds a roll-up J-pole. And you can see that I'm just running uh, right now my infed half-wave kit that I love so much. Now, to get the uh, coax into the RV, I'm going to show you this on the outside, and then I'll show you again on the inside. What we've got here, though, is an outdoor shower. And when I open that up, let me see if I can move this out of the way. When I open that up, hopefully you guys are going to be able to see that. I was able to pass coax right around this piece of plumbing here and I'll show you where that pops out. Also want to show you guys real quick how I got the 12 volt power cable from the battery up front uh, all the way inside to underneath the dinette. So let's take a quick peek at that. All right, so we're looking at the battery box right here, uh, and this is all of the factory cables that uh, come in and out going for the solar panel and various things. This back here is the new power cable that I ran for uh, ham radio, which is terminated right underneath the dinette inside. So this just feeds underneath the RV, 
and then snakes along the frame and I followed the exact same wiring that uh, the factory used when they did their install. Now we're actually underneath the camper looking up and you'll see that whole mess of wires uh, going through that penetration point. Well, what they use is something very similar to expanding foam insulation. So it was easy enough to take a, uh, basically a coat hanger and poke up through there and then pull the wire that I had fed from the front of the RV up through the floor. And that comes out right underneath the dinette inside and we'll show you that again in here in just a second but that made it super easy uh, to get power run from the battery to the inside of the rv without having to create any new penetration points so up on the roof now you can see the two solar panels that are installed the one on the left is the one that came factory installed on the rv and that's a 190 watt panel the other one that's on the right is the one that I installed, giving me an additional 100 watts of solar power. So far, these two panels have done fine in keeping up with demand for my ham radio needs and everything else in the camper. So now let's go ahead and go inside and take a look at a few more things. Inside, the first thing I want to mention is the LevelMate Pro. While it's not ham radio related, if you don't have an automatic level system on your RV, definitely check this out. It makes life so easy getting the RV set up when you reach your destination. Now, I've mentioned this in a previous video, but I do want to talk about the Wi-Fi Ranger again. This is not an upgrade that I did. This actually came factory installed when we purchased the RV. But the cool thing about it is it just gives me the ability to build a network inside the RV so that I can connect between Raspberry Pis and my Mac or my Mac to Raspberry Pis or Raspberry Pi to Raspberry Pi, whichever way I need to go. The Wi-Fi Ranger gives me a great option for building out a quick network. All right, so let's go ahead and head to the back of the RV to the bathroom. I wanna show you guys where that coax comes through and how I was able to do that without creating any new penetration points. So here in the bathroom, right underneath the sink, let's see if we can get you guys down here, open that up. I'm gonna kinda of put the camera right back here, but you can see the coax right there and where it comes through that penetration point around the outdoor shower. So that's the way I was able to feed it inside without creating any new penetration points. Now, from here, it feeds around right here and then underneath this here. And there's actually a hole that was already created in this wall. And when that comes out on the other side, you're underneath the dinette. So this is the base of the dinette here. This is that wall that we just passed through from underneath. So that coax is coming through here. And then I gave it a couple of bulkhead connectors right here on this side. And then you can see the Anderson power pole is right up there above it. So this gives me a quick and easy way to be able to hook everything up when we get to our destination and be able to be on the air pretty rapidly. Now, the last thing I wanted to show you guys was the solar charge controller, and this is pretty cool. It does give me a good amount of information about the battery. I still like having that Bluetooth shunt because it gives me a more detailed analysis of what's going on with the battery. But you can see right now we're pulling in about 10 amps off of the solar panels on the roof, and that's with a little bit of shading going on with those panels as well. But we are currently at a state park, so we're hooked up to full electric here. So the only thing I'm running off of that battery is the ham radio gear. And with a 705 and a Raspberry Pi, well, I'm only drawing about 600 milliamps from the power source. So if I can put 10 amps back into the battery every hour, well, that nets me uh, a positive of about 9.5 amps each hour. So with uh, that amount of solar and that little draw we're easily able to keep the battery topped off so there you have it guys there's a few of the upgrades that i have done to the rv so i could play radio when we were out and about i appreciate you guys tuning in today be sure to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and we will see you guys on the next one until then seven three